I asked myself a fairly simple question. What would happen if I copied an already developed negative onto negative film? And this is what I ended up with. And before we dive into this, let me just start with some hardware stuff. I shot all of this with my Nikon FE2, a 55mm f2.8 AIS macro, and the Nikon PK13 extension tube. For the first few rolls, I used the Nikon ES1 slide copy adapter. And for the rest, I used the Negative Supply Basic Carrier 35. The first thing I did was I took some black and white negatives and I copied them onto some HP5. Unsurprisingly, I ended up with black and white positives. Please ignore these little tiny negatives. I screwed up my very first few attempts and I am both embarrassed and ashamed by these results and we shall never speak about these ever again. Black and white negatives shot on black and white negatives gives you black and white positives. It's pretty straightforward. But one thing I didn't really consider was the effect of the film base. HP5, for example, has this grayish base, while certain film stocks like Kodak's T-Max 100 or Fuji Acros has a fairly clear base that would probably yield better results for projecting or just general viewing. Or you could get a roll of Adox Copex Rapid. This stuff has some of the clearest base I've ever seen, but I didn't bother because I didn't care enough to try. Because at this point, I wasn't really interested in what I could do with black and white film, but rather more interested in what I could do with color film. Most color negative film stocks have this orange base. And when you try to make a copy onto some C41 film, you'll end up with a positive, but one with a dense orange mask over it. You could correct this in post, but that's not what I'm really interested in. The question becomes, what can you do to deal with this orange base? So I started looking through my film stash and I found this roll of FPP low ISO color film. All I knew about this film was that it was just some slow cinema film, but I did know that there are some slow intermediate or duplicating film that has a clear base. So without doing any research, I just went ahead and I shot a roll. Ignoring the fact that almost all of my exposures didn't come out. The important thing is that this film also had an orange base. I later come to find out that this is actually Kodak 2254, and if I did research beforehand, I would have known that this was not the film stock I should have used. At this point, I just shelved the project. Nothing was working, and I knew I had to rethink my approach. And this is sort of where I just took a detour to see what happened. If you follow this channel, you know that I'm very into trichrome photography. And if you don't know what trichrome photography is, I made a whole video about it, but the long and short of it is you create color photos with some black and white film and red, green, blue filters. And it results with negatives that look like this. You'll notice that there's frames that are in triplicate. One frame was shot with a red filter, one with a green filter, and one with a blue filter. And this got me thinking. What would happen if I essentially did a reverse trichrome where I triple exposed trichrome negatives with their appropriate filters onto a single frame of color film? The idea intrigued me, but I knew the execution was going to be agony because I'm triple exposing each frame. A 36 exposure roll would require 108 separate exposures with 108 filter swaps, but I did it. And it actually kind of worked. Well, Depends on how you define worked. Triple exposing trichrome negatives will yield a full color image. You just still had to disregard the orange base. At this point, the objective changed. I realized that I could triple expose my infrared trichrome negatives to create a color infrared positive. It would be like a DIY aerochrome. And I always thought that color infrared positives were unobtainable, but now I realize that this might be my chance. The first big issue I need to tackle is the orange base. And so I looked around and I found out that Kodak 2383 cinema film has a clear base. Fortunately, I found someone who rolled this film stock into 35 millimeter canisters. I bought a few rolls and this is what I got. The first thing you might notice is that indeed, this base is clear and then everything else is just orange and terrible. I was so disappointed because I actually thought that this was gonna work. While I'm not 100% sure what caused this orange cast, I do have my suspicions. You see, normal color negative film stocks are constructed pretty similarly. You have three color sensitive layers going from top to bottom, blue, green, then red. 
There is also a yellow layer between the blue and the green. As light travels through the blue layer, it hits the yellow filter, then the green layer, and then the red layer. This yellow filter is important because silver halide is inherently sensitive to blue light, and this yellow filter cuts out any extra blue light that might have otherwise traveled through and contaminate the green and the red layers. 2383 is built differently. The layers go green, red, and blue, meaning the blue light goes through all three layers, which leads me to believe that the yellow-orange tint comes from the fact that the blue light has leached its way onto the red and the green layers. I don't know for sure if this is in fact what is going on or if I'm just reading into the charts a little too much, but that's what I'm leaning towards. Another thing to consider is that 2383 is an ECN2 film and I technically cross-processed it in C41. While I don't think it is the issue, it's something I can't completely write off, so it's also worth noting. And honestly, after I saw this, I just kind of sat there defeated. And then I came up with one last idea. So at this point, I think I was just overthinking it. I mean, why was I trying so hard to get a clear base from C41 film when instead I could just use slide film? This poses its own set of challenges. For starters, I can't use any of my negatives because a negative plus a positive leaves me with a negative. So the first step was to turn my negatives into a positive. And remember this can of Adox Copex Rapid? I use this to turn my infrared trichrome negatives into a positive. And then I took these positives and I copied them onto some slide film. And it actually worked. I made color infrared positives. Now this is what I call a three foot project, as in it looks good from three feet away, but the moment you take a close look at it, it really starts to fall apart. First, I overdeveloped it, so we're not off to a great start. Next, we have a lot of registration issues, partly due to the fact that I have no real consistent way of lining these frames up. And then if you look at the colors, they're all kind of off. My exposures were also not that great, which messed with the overall color balance. And lastly, this lost a lot of fidelity. This is a copy of a copy, and mind you that the copies weren't that great to begin with. If you compare this to my original trichrome, it doesn't even compare. It's just a soft, mushy mess. This is no good for any kind of critical viewing, and most definitely not a replacement for aerochrome. But I was able to make a color infrared positive, so I got that going for me. And this is pretty much where I'm at right now. While I'd prefer to have a perfect, pristine, positive that could rival Aerochrome, I'm just happy that I was able to get even this awful mess to work. I do have plans to revisit this later. I already know a few things I could improve on, but not anytime soon, because that's going to require like, effort and doing stuff. <laughs>